How's it going, everyone? Adam Molina here with Drone Rush, and we're at the DJI event where they just announced a new drone called the Mavic Air. This guy. Let's get a closer look. So DJI announced another drone. Shocker. The company refuses to let up with the onslaught of unique drones at every possible price point. The newest of which is the Mavic Air. Now if you couldn't decide whether you wanted to spend your money on the Spark or on the Mavic, the Air might be right up your alley. It's the warm porridge right in the middle. With some features borrowed from the Spark, some others borrowed from the Mavic, and some uniquely its own. Let's start with the obvious. This thing is tiny, and also very compact when folded. If you thought the Mavic was portable, wait until you get your hands on this. It's roughly half the size of the Mavic, but the Spark still has it beat. The camera DJI packed into here is a 1 over 2.3 inch sensor, which is fine, but it now records at 100 megabits per second, which is great news. That's going to give you significantly more detail in your videos and pictures, so that sensor size might just be enough. You get 4K at 30 frames per second, full HD at 120 frames per second, and 12 megapixel stills. The coolest part of the camera though is that it's 3-axis stabilized, so your shots will be silky smooth. DJI claims that the Air can reach top speeds of 42.5 miles per hour, which means it can outfly the previous Mavic Pro by 2.5 miles an hour. This means you'll see stable video in winds up to 22 miles an hour. Although we were indoors, DJI managed to set up a makeshift obstacle course just to show off what the new A-Pass or Advanced Pilot Assistance System can do. In all the hands-on demos I saw, and there were a lot of them, not one drone fell though not for lack of trying, I'm sure. The drone is just that good at avoiding things that get in its way. Then there's the hand gestures, so you can control your drone Kylo Ren style. You can take flight by holding up your palm, make it go further away from you by spreading both hands further apart, and bring it back in by bringing your hands closer together. It all seemed to work very well, but then again, these are fairly controlled environments, and it's still gonna take a certain level of trust when you're doing this out in the real world. But it worked great from what I saw. There's also improved algorithms for object recognition, so no more drawing boxes around anything that you're trying to track. Now you can just tap on the subject you want to track and the drone will figure out the rest. My personal favorite feature, however, is something pretty simple. The Mavic Air has 8GB of onboard storage, so if you happen to forget your micro SD card, which always seems to happen to me, you can still get some footage. Battery life could be better at around 21 minutes of flight time, but that's enough time to get your shots if you know what you're doing, and plus the size of the drone doesn't really allow for much more. But if you don't know what you're doing, you can always use the quick shot and boomerang features, which are pre-installed one-button flight paths that you can use to get some unique and interesting shots. After experiencing the Mavic Pro, there is little doubt that the new Mavic Air is smaller, easier to use, and debatably easier to fly. We can't wait to put the camera to the test and we're eager to see it in action. The idea of taking a capable drone with us almost anywhere we go is more than exciting. Stay tuned for even more coverage of the DJI Mavic Air. We got a taste for it. Now it's time to get a review unit for thorough testing and of course, a full review. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the coverage and hit that little notification bell down there so you'll be the first to know every time we upload a new video.